Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina visiting Sparks Toyota and I'm checking out a 2019 Toyota 4Runner in the limited nightshade special edition for 2019. This 4Runner is sitting on 245, 60 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 20 inch alloy wheels with a gloss finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rudders on all four wheels. The name of this color is Midnight Black Metallic. And the nightshade has a lot of what they call black chrome. So you'll see some black chrome here in the front. And just to kind of point it out here with this pointer, you can see this is what they're talking about. And it kind of blends a little bit in with the black. If you don't really know what to look for, you start to see it everywhere once you notice it. So you can see it's down here on the base around that bumper and the fog lights and here in the center. And that's what the black looks like. Has a kind of a subtle metal flake in there, but it's in there. Mostly gloss black in this vehicle. The side mirrors all around. Uh, but here in the front, in the grill, you have some flat black, including the emblem is flat black. And this is kind of like a grayish color right here at the very bottom. So it's not a, uh, kind of separates it for the styling. So all the, all the lights here in the front are powered by halogens. So your low beams are in a projector tube for your low beams and high beams reflector halogens. You have gloss black bezels as well. A little bit of a chrome trim there at the top. And the fog lights are in reflector housings powered by halogens as well. It also has a parking sensors across the front. You can see the little, they kind of blend in pretty good. Gloss black. So looking at the profile here, you can see side handles, even the limited badging, which I'll get to it a little bit closer right in here little limited badging is also gloss black so everything kind of blends in the 20 inch wheels gloss black it does have a little strip of that black chrome across the base but uh, they're doing a pretty good job of blacking everything out now the tail lights kind of stand out especially from this angle with that chrome you see a little bit of the the shocks in the back they're actually red you can see a little bit of them right there looking pretty cool this is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed to where you can keep it in your pocket and use the vehicle. So it has lock and unlock and a panic button. Let's go ahead and push that. Nice strong horn, physical but the physical key on the inside in case you need it. So as long as you have this key within a close proximity of the outside of the door, it could be in your pocket, it could be in a bag or whatever. As long as it's on the outside of the door, close by here, you can lock the door by putting your finger over a sensor that's indicated by these two little places here. So, put there, now the door is locked. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle, and it unlocks the doors and gives you access. Now, the uh, has a physical key location uh, on your driver's side only. The inside of the passenger side door is, you guessed it, all black again, except for the handle there, which is chrome. So it has some gloss black accents here and a like a simulated leather or, or type material right in here. So it's soft touch all in this area, even here, and then it continues on out here. The rest of the door is the durable hard plastic. I really like the way they have this pass through right here for your, your hand to grab the door, but also a little place to put some stuff, cell phone or whatever, and then you have bottle holders and storage spaces at the very bottom. Now these are leather trimmed, heated and ventilated seats with some contrast stitching there on the side and then the perforated leather there in the center portion. And there's your leg room, the floor mat hooks in place. check out the glove compartment which it is locking it is massive 
It's just a big glove compartment. And there's a door in the back, and that's how you access your cabin filter. Then you have kind of like have this brushed aluminum look right in here. The dash is a hard touch plastic, non-reflective. You also have a handle to help you get in and out of the vehicle right there. The inside of the back door, very similar in styling and features, soft touch surfaces around your arm. The rest is the hard touch. You have, even have a little storage pocket there. And I like the way that you both the front and rear have the controls up high so they're easy to get to and easy to see. All right, so basically the, the back seat is basically a bench seat on the bottom, which it folds down in a 60-40 split, but you also have the center portion that folds down independently in case you need like a long box or put your skis back here or something like that that doesn't take up too much of your, your passenger space. Now you can flip that up. It snaps in place to this side, the 60-40 split, and then the armrest and cup holders fold down when you want them. You have a power supply, two 12 volt power supplies there, and climate control vents, and a slight hump in the center. Both on the back of both front seats has a net pocket, and this is actually a, a durable plastic on the back of the seats as well. So if you have kids pick, you know, kicking the back of the seat or whatever, that's going to be more durable. But overall, really good legroom here. I have the driver's seat all the way back, just to give you an idea of still how much legroom you have. Uh, even with you know the front seat all the way back and the seats are quite a ways off the floor So they give you that chair effect But they fold down so the bottom part portion flips up and the back folds down So that way you get a almost a perfectly flat cargo space when you add to it You can also flip the headrest down to add to your visibility a little bit Taking a look at the back, you see the roof rails blacked out, but it also has the gloss black shark fin antenna there in the center portion. And then there's your rear spoiler. There's a third brake light right in there powered by LEDs. But you also, right under here is a hidden windshield wiper that swings out like this way. Now this rear glass, you're able to raise and lower it just like a side glass, it goes all the way down. So you have that open air feel. All the badging back here is blacked out with a matte black. The backup camera, pretty significant offset to it right in here. So there would be the center. So it's about it's about five or six inches offset. You have the parking sensors back here as well, and then a little strip of that black chrome and the towing package as well. Parking sensors. There's a blacked out exhaust tip. Even has a little Toyota symbol on it. So showing you that it's a genuine blacked out exhaust tip, I guess. So you have a combination of LED and standard bulbs for your tail lights. Okay, let's go ahead and lift this up. There's a button under here in the center. So I think the button should be offset in the center camera. The camera should be in the center, that's my opinion. All right, so we've got two speakers under here and a strap to pull it back down and two lights. So at nighttime, again, it gives you more illumination behind the vehicle when you have this open, but also two of them, so that way you have less shadows. I like that. Okay, so here's your cargo area. And you have some protection for the bumper, so if you're sliding suitcases or whatever in and out, that helps out. Also, speaking of helping out, you have this. This slides out. So this is, uh, it holds 440 pounds. Okay, so one of the benefits of this, one thing, you can sit on it and tailgate back here. You can hang some stuff off of it when you have it pulled out here and here, like hang bags or whatever. So if you're out um, camping or whatever, hanging out, you have a place kind of like a tailgate on a truck. 
Another thing is, when you're putting something heavy back here, you put it on this, then you slide it forward. It's easier to load. Then, when you go to take it out, you pull it back, it comes back towards you, it's easier to grab and unload. You also have some storage pockets back there. They're not so easy to get to so much here. I mean, you can reach them. You just have to reach over all this stuff to get to them. You can also reach them on the sides, but it's something that you would want to use for things that you don't access all the time. You know, maybe some spare tools or whatever. Speaking of tools, here on the left side is a compartment to access your tools for your spare tire and your jack. You have little places to put some stuff, little shelf pockets there on both sides. You also have a 12 volt power supply and 120 volt 400 watt power inverter back here right next to your JBL subwoofer. That's your front tag. And then you have tie downs all the way around on each corner for a cargo. It also has a place for a net, I mean not a net, but a, uh, a shade which you can hook in if you'd like to do that. You also have some antennas here in these side panels, glass. You can see them on that side and this side. So I suppose that's for your AM radio, FM radio, something like that. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is your cargo space, so which is pretty good and it's very versatile and easy to use. But if you need to add to cargo space, you can fold these seats down, one or the other or both, to add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. Fuel door is here on the driver's side and it has a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap here. Okay, let's go ahead and start it up. Have the key inside the vehicle. I just put my foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Floor mat hooks in place. There's your accelerator brake pedal. Footrest here on the far left. And a foot actuated parking brake there as well. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch a little bit to the right of center. Right in here, you can actually see it. Pull it, to push it to the left and lift up. And it doesn't take a lot of energy. And it gets to a certain point, it goes the rest of the way up by itself. You see the underside of the hood has insulation, a seal across the front. You also have seals across the back, the back and sides here. Helps out with airflow, but also noise. You also have a cover, covers up the engine, but you can see it around the outside. So there's the battery. So they tried to hide it from us, but we're gonna see it anyway, because we're gonna look all around the edges. Hey, there we go. We can actually see the valve cover, coil pack there. Nice. It also has a mechanical fan attached to the engine uh, instead of a electronic one, so that's, that's a plus in my book. Under that big plastic cover is a 4.0 liter 24 valve V6 with dual independent VVT, pumping out 270 horsepower, 278 pound-feet of torque, and is paired to a five-speed automatic transmission, electronically controlled five-speed automatic transmission. Now this vehicle also has a sport enhanced suspension and a center differential. It has active track with a four wheel drive system and a, with the center differential. So that way you can escalate your four wheel drive needs when needed. And we'll, we'll look at some of the features when we get inside. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have two presets for your power seat and all the power windows here are one touch. One touch down, one touch up. Door lock controls are right here. So the driver's seat of course has to one up the passenger by having a power seat but also more controls. So it can tilt, it can go up and down. It also has a two-way lumbar adjustment as well. And they're both heated and ventilated as well. 
as a reminder. Here to the left of the steering column, you have a few buttons here. There's a blank one down here, that's pretty neat. And then you have a heater that is underneath your windshield wiper. So when they're frozen, sometimes they get frozen in wintertime and stuck to the windshield, you can go ahead and turn that on and it heats them and breaks them free for you. At least that's the idea. Your power inverter, you can go ahead and turn that on here and it'll tell you whether it's in 400 watts or 120 volt, uh, 100 watt, sorry, uh, mode, depending on if you have the engine running or whatever it's going on. And then your side mirrors are adjusted here. Your interior gauge dimmer switch is right there. And your parking sensors, you can turn those on or off. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place right here. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. And uh, I like the way these ch these seats feel like a chair. They're quite a ways off the floor, even though I have the seat all the way down and all the way back, you can see I have plenty of leg room here. And this probably would be a little bit too far back. I'd probably have a little bit further forward. I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea. So it has a uh, leather trim steering wheel. You can see it has the perforations there on the side. And there's the plastic portions that extend down here. There is leather on the back side, but here on the front, it's the plastic and then the leather. And it's soft to the touch as well. Pretty good thickness. So the cruise control is back down here. So you turn it on, set, resume, cancel. That's how easy it is to use that. So it's easy to get to, just kind of not obvious sometimes. Bluetooth controls are here, answer, hang up, and then you have your voice recognition that helps with making calls. This button corresponds with this little screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in a minute. You have your volume for your radio. Mode, that's your audio source. And then you can change through your audio tracks or different places on your screen here, like your presets and stuff for your radio. You can go back out of certain things as well. So it depends on what screen you're in. Uh, this helps navigate on the, your touch screen. Windshield wiper controls are here. Turn signals here, but you also have your daytime running light off, automatic, parking, and headlights. Fog lights are controlled there. So check out the gauges. It has a little bit of blue accent there. RPMs on the left side. Speedometers on the right side. You also have your engine coolant temperature fuel gauge, what gear you're in, and a little tiny screen right here, which we could push that display button. Right now it's showing the speed, digital speedometer basically. It also shows outside temperature, your odometer, and which vehicle, which way the vehicle's facing, your, uh, di uh, your compass. So when I push this button, this is kind of like a vehicle status. It kind of looks like an 80s arcade game. But as I open this door, you see a little animation shows me which door's open. Push and display again, takes to settings, blank screen, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, they'll show a little bar there, uh, distance to empty, cruising range, and a timer which you can reset. And it goes back to your digital speedometer. Up here there's a, completely separate from the screen, is a digital clock that's easy to, to look at, to glance at, because it's separate, you don't have to look for it on the screen. So your eyes know right where to look. It's also in a high position, so you don't have to look away from the road much. It also has an easy way of adjusting the clock as well. Four-way flashes are here. And here's your touch screen. Now check out the big knobs. You have a big volume knob, tune through the stations. Physical buttons as well to pretty much go anywhere you want on the touch screen. So right now we're in the home screen, which is a split between the navigation and your audio and your phone. So your audio, phone, navigation. We can go into audio separately. Choose the audio source, AM, FM, satellite radio, CD or CD players right here, USB, Bluetooth audio, and auxiliary inputs. We can go to apps. So we can go into like say your navigation, your phone, all that stuff. Maintenance, this is really nice. Keep track of changing the oil, any filters, anything like that. Well, let's go in the navigation screen. You can see the map. Put it in a destination here. 
put in the address. You can also have presets here. And the settings, this is where you go in to adjust all your, your display, your home screen, however you want to have it. So like your home screen, you can have that split. You can have you can change it if you like, basically. All right, so down here is the climate control. So it's a dual zone, dr driver and passenger. Nice big knob, which is for your temperature. Fan speeds right in here. And then you have where, to, where you want the air to blow, air conditioning, recirculate the air. Front and rear defrosters, and when you put on the rear defroster, it also turns on the heated side mirrors. Okay, so down here is the 12 volt power supply, your heated seat controls, heated and ventilated seats. You just uh, turn it the direction you want, and it's a three stage. USB and auxiliary inputs are underneath this cover, like so. Little storage space here. So, your four wheel drive controls is as simple as turning this knob here. So, it has four wheel drive low and four wheel drive high, but uh, so this would be a, a full-time four-wheel drive. But you also have a locking center differential too, so you can put in four-wheel drive, like a low-range lock for slow crawling through four-wheel drive situations, off-road situations. Cup holders here, and there's a little bit more to the story because it does have active track and has a button. I'll show you where that is in a second. There's a little place to put some stuff. You can prop a cell phone up here or whatever cup holder and you notice it, the storage space extends into the cup holder which is good here's your shifter real easy to use put it in reverse now the backup the parking sensors are now active also your backup cameras popped up here with uh, static guidelines offset so it's not really in the center but it helps out with backing up to a trailer hitch or just seeing behind you in general neutral and then drive and then you can put it over here and change the uh, the gear ratio so you can limit the high gear ratio if you need to downshift or whatever and then this is for the power rear glass so yeah well, let's go ahead and look at that now because this is pretty cool and it's one touch down one touch up isn't that awesome so if you're cruising on a nice day, you can lower the glass in the back and all in the sides and everything. Soft to the touch, very soft to the touch. Doesn't bottom out anytime soon. And nice big, uh, I would say big enough to share with your passenger. Armrest. It lifts up. It has a place to put some tissues or whatever under here. Clip a pin or something. And you have plenty of storage space in this compartment. 12 volt power supply in there as well. Place to put some quarters it looks like and a place for wires to go in and out of the compartment there. Has an auto dim rear view mirror. Sensors right back here on this side. Place to put some shades and it has a not super soft felt on the inside. So this is where you have the active track. So this is the active traction control in which it's able to, if you have a wheel spin, it's able to stop the wheel spin and transfer the power to the tire that has traction. The stability and traction control, the standard is over here in which you could turn that off. Default will be on. And then you have a downhill descent control. Basically it's a, uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like cruise control, but it's going really, really slow down a slippery surface. So it keeps you at a steady speed without going too fast and slipping too much. You can reach the road, roadside assistance here. Home link garage door opener controls are here. Uh, you can have the interior lights turn on with the doors by using that. This is for your sunroof. Then you have tap lights there. A little ambient light shows up here. That's nice. So the visors have mirrors and lights. Also have an extension here, it goes out quite a ways. Place to put some stuff there. So here's the sunroof. It's block it has a shade that blocks 100 percent of the light, which is good. You can open it up. You can tilt. Or slide it back, sorry. You 
can also tell it, slide it, push the button again, it goes back a little bit further. Now let's tilt it. Okay, so now we're looking back here again, but instead of looking at the power rear window, we're looking at the visibility. So you can see I have one headrest down, one headrest up, just to give you an idea of the difference. Overall, plenty of glass back there, lots of windows to look out of. It's overall really good. Of course, you have the camera and the parking sensors as well. All right, so there you have it. Before I let you go, though, I got some sometimes visuals help out and use the pause button I'm gonna show the window sticker in a minute too but uh, you have the different trims here starts off with the SR5 then you have the SR5 premium TRD off-road that's a popular one TRD off-road premium the limited and the limited nightshade edition that's the one we're in now and of course, the top dog over here is the TRD Pro. Even has its own background. Alrighty. So I'm gonna have a I'm gonna try to have a link to this brochure in the description so you can check it out. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, and I'll see you guys next time.